Hey everyone, this is Heidi with another knitting video tutorial. And in this video, we are going to be looking at how to knit some woven plaid. In front of me here, I have a swatch for doing woven plaid knitting. What's really cool about knitting a plaid is that it packs a really visual punch, especially in a high contrast yarn. And when you do a woven plaid in knitting, it's accomplished by doing slip stitches and weaving your tail in and out and sliding your needles back and forth along a circular knitting needle or double pointed knitting needles. So let's look at some tips and tricks for how to do this. All right, on my needles here, I have um, a multiple of 10 stitches plus two. Um, this plaid that I'm gonna show you can be done with a multiple of five plus two. So we're looking right now at the wrong side of our knitting. And so for the first stitch of the row and the last stitch of the row, we're gonna knit it on both sides just to lock in those edges. So to do your weaving for your plaid, you're gonna start by slipping one stitch with the yarn in back, one with the yarn in front. Then we're gonna do that again. Slip one with the yarn in back, and one with the yarn in front, and one with the yarn in back one more time. So if we look at this, you'll see that we have worked over five stitches by just slipping them and not working a knit or purl stitch on any of them, but we've woven that tail through in between the stitches. Um, looking at our swatch, we can see where the woven stitches are appearing on the right side of the fabric. So for the rest of the row, when we're not weaving, we're simply going to purl the next five stitches. and then knitting the last one because we knit the first and last stitch of each row in this woven plaid. So now this is where the mind blowing thing happens. So we've gotten to the end of our row, but even though this has worked flat, we're not yet going to turn our work. We're gonna pull our circular needle, you can also do this on a double pointed needle, through our work and start working on the other end of the wrong side without turning our work around. Kind of crazy, but it has a really cool effect. And it makes color work a lot easier using this slipping with the circular needles or double pointed needles. So next we're gonna do our next row, which we'll start by knitting one. And then since we're using our orange color and not our blue color for this row, we're going to purl, because we're on the wrong side, five stitches, and it's those five stitches we simply knit, or the, the five stitches we simply uh, slipped last time. All right, and so since we just did the slipping with the blue, what we're gonna do is slip five stitches holding our working yarn at the back. So this will just be like stranded color work on the wrong side, like so, and we'll end the row with a knit stitch. So let me give you a little recap of what we did here. So we slipped our needle through our work so we could continue working on the wrong side. Then I knit one in purl five and then slipped five without weaving the tail through any of it and then knit the last stitch of the row. Only now are we gonna turn the work to keep going. All right, so we've turned our work and now both of our colors of yarn, the working tails are at the same side of our work and we're ready for the next row. So looking here, we are going to start with blue on this end. So we're gonna grab our blue tail and knit the first stitch and then knit across the next five. And while we're working with the one blue color, the orange can just hang out in back waiting to be worked on the next part of the row. So there's knit five, and now we need to do that weaving again. So with this woven plaid, you can see here, 
that there are three rows where there are three spots, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, where the blue is peeking out in the otherwise plain stockinette of the orange. And then there are two rows where there's just two, one, two, one, two. So since we've done the row of three peekaboos of the blue, we're gonna do one of the two blue peekaboos. So we're gonna slip the first stitch with the yarn in back because we're gonna wanna stagger the peekaboos. Then we're going to do one with the yarn in front, forming the first peekaboo, as I'm calling it. And you can see how it's staggered here. Slip with the yarn in back, slip with the yarn in front, forming the next peekaboo, slip with the yarn in back, and then knit. So you can see here that we've now got one, two, three peekaboos staggered with one, two peekaboo. Now to work the other color on the right side of our work, because again, every two rows, you turn your work instead of every row. And so we've, we'll just slip our needle that way so we can begin working in the orange color. So we're gonna knit one, and then here is where we will do another five slips of the blue, leaving the orange just loose at the back, for stranded color work. And then we will knit five across those orange stitches. And a good way to think about this woven plaid as you're trying to kind of wrap your mind around the stitch that's being formed, a good way to think of it is that, is that you're making something that's checked. So if you forget about the slip stitches and the weaving of the colors, Looking at the wrong side can sometimes help with this too. There's a check of an orange here, blue check, orange check, blue check. And then on this side you can see orange check, blue check, orange check, blue check. So if you think of it like a checkerboard, but with these extra woven pieces interspersed, that's a good way to help wrap your mind around the stitches you're doing. And I actually recommend if you're new to working a woven plaid like this, trying to knit up a swatch just to get your mind around mastering the tension, because you don't want these stranded bits to be too tight, and you don't want the woven bits to be too tight either, because that will result in a warped fabric. All right. So for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna skip ahead and show you how to do um, a weaving of the orange instead of a weaving of the blue. So to do that, let's do a setup row of, I'm just gonna knit across and back in blue, just to give you a little bit of a visual marker of where I'm gonna change what I'm demonstrating. So I'm gonna just knit down and back in blue. I'm gonna knit down in blue, and I'm gonna knit back in blue. So we've jumped ahead a little bit so I can show you guys how to weave the orange tail in and out of this woven plaid. So, so far, you've seen how to do the weaving of the blue tail throughout the orange stockinette. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the opposite. Spoiler alert, it's basically the exact same thing, but it sometimes helps just to visualize it with the other colors. So right now, we're looking at the right side of our work and I've knit the first stitch of the row. Now, the orange yarn is our working tail and we're going to leave the yarn at the back to slip the first stitch, then bring the yarn to the front to slip the next one, yarn to the back to slip, yarn to the front to slip, yarn to the back to slip. So right there, we have done one of the two, you can see right here I'm pulling on them, the bumps, the rows where there's two bumps of the orange on the sea of blue stockinette. Then we'll just knit across the rest of the row in orange. And 
and then without turning our work, which again is the key to this woven plaid, we will do the next row in blue. So I've pulled my circular needle to the other end of my work, and now we will knit one to start our row, and then knit five. And then stranded color work style, we will slip five stitches, leaving that blue working tail at the back, and finish off our row by knitting one. So there is an easy, quick look at how to do the orange weaving for the woven plaid. It's kind of, again, tension is probably the biggest challenge in this project to master, and I really recommend practicing with a swatch before you cast on for a larger project in this really fun plaid motif.